Hey gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and thank you very much for spending some time with me today and making some time out of your schedule to check the video out. Much appreciated. And guys, today we are going to have yet another video on the chatterbait fishing. And um, without a doubt, the chatterbait is probably the most covered YouTube topic on bass fishing YouTube channels out there. And it's pretty much for good reason. The chatterbait is a fish catching bait, laid jigs in general out there. They catch a lot of fish, they catch quality fish, they win tournaments, or they used to win tournaments before LiveScope ruined everything. But it's, it, regardless, it is a great lure to catch bass on. And what I want to do in this video, we are coming up on chatterbait season. About another month from now, they're going to start to be getting really good. And I sort of want to give everybody a refresher course. If you're not familiar with a lot of the, the ins and outs and tips and uh, strategies to, with, with chatterbait fishing, I want to sort of go over that with you guys. And for you guys out there that have a lot of experience on fishing a chatterbait, you might be able to pick up something here and some of the experiences I had that helps your own fishing out with it. Also guys, I will make sure that I'll link all of the lures that I talk about today in my Tackle Warehouse uh, description in the video here. So if you guys are interested in any of the stuff I talk about or if you need to buy some fish and tackle, um, if you use that link in the description, that's a really good way to help the channel out. Uh, much appreciated there. Okay guys, chatterbaits, man, we've talked about them a bunch. Probably will continue talking about them. Man, I, I sort of want to, my goal in this video is I want to simplify this because one of the things about the bladed jig genre in the bass fishing deals, if, if, there's so many of them out there now. It's sort of like when the square bill crankbaits took off, every, every company out there had a square bill crankbait. And it's sort of the same with a bladed jig and a chatterbait. So it can get confusing. Every different company out there makes it. I'm going to show you what works for me and to simplify everything to make the process a little bit easier. So anyway, there's two primary baits that I use. I mean, as far as when I'm doing my bladed jig fishing. The, my, if you guys have seen some of this before, my favorite is just the old school chatterbait. Nothing fancy about it. This is the cheap chatterbait. I think this is the chatterbait elite. But um, this is one of the original ones out there. And it sort of got overshadowed by the high-tech jackhammer here. Everybody uses the jackhammer and everybody says the jackhammer is a superior bait. But guys, one of the things I want to talk about in this video, I, can't, I still catch more bass on the old chatterbait than I do the jackhammer. I don't understand why. It's got to have something to do with the vibration because the jackhammer actually has better components in it. It's got a better hook. It's got a better keeper. It's got a better skirt. It's got a better head, attention to detail. Everything about the bait is better. It costs twice as much as the regular chatterbait, but you're paying for the components, and I don't mind that. And I have caught a lot of fish on the jackhammer. Don't get me right. Don't get me wrong, but day in and day out, you know, I just catch, seems like more fish on the regular chatterbait. And I still mix them up a little bit. I, I still, you know, use both of them. So really it's whatever, you know, you're comfortable with. If you don't mind spending $15 on a jackhammer, that's fine. If you want to spend half of that on the old chatterbait, you're still going to catch a bunch of fish on it. Um, to simplify things, guys, I use two different sizes. I use the 3 8 model right here, and I use a half ounce model. These are the only two models that I use. Most of the time, I'll go with the 3 8 model if I'm fishing a little bit shallower. Say that I'm fishing around shallow bank targets, or maybe I'm fishing around shallow grass, um, I'll go to the 3 8 And if I'm fishing a little bit deeper, like maybe some deeper grass flats that are five to eight foot deep, or say, for example, I'm fishing a really big trailer that tends to float the lure up a little bit, I'll go to a half ounce or if the wind is really, really blowing. Mainly the reason I'm going to the half ounce is just to get the bait down deeper, regardless what the conditions are. But those are the only two that I use. The blade colors in there, I basically use two different type of blade colors, guys. I prefer a black. Um, I've experimented with the browns and the green pumpkins and everything like that, but I catch just as many fish just on a black one. Give you a little tip on this too. This is going, the paint will chip off of these things. So. Make sure you take a, uh, a bottle of black fingernail polish and you can always touch it up with the black fingernail polish and it stays on pretty good. So I'll use the black and then I'll, I'll just use a, a chrome one also. Chrome, sometimes I'll use gold, but I, I consider the chrome and the gold that do about the same thing. In other words, if I'm fishing, if I'm trying to resemble a bluegill or a crawdad or a perch, I'm using the black blade. And if I'm trying to resemble a shad, I'm using the silver or the gold blade. So those are the main two things. And it's the same with the skirt. To keep it simple again, 
most 99% or 95% of my chatterbait fishing, I've got two skirt colors. I've got a green, some type of a green pumpkin. Now, I'll tie, I tie my own skirts up because sometimes I'll put green pumpkin orange. Sometimes I'll put, you know, different like a barbed wire, peanut butter and jelly, but some type of natural green pumpkin look. This is to resemble a perch or a crawdad. And then I'll use some type of a shad pattern, whether it be just a clear skirt or some type of a chartreuse. Uh, the shad pattern out there and the crawdad or the perch pattern are basically the only two colors I use. Now, how I determine color as far as what the fish want, um, a lot of times it's just experimentation because I have found that if you're on a pretty decent chatterbait bite, they will bite both colors. I have, I have hardly never been in a situation where you can't catch them on a shad. You, you can't catch them on at least one or the other to some extent. Now, one of the things that I have found about it is if you're fishing a little bit clearer water and brighter sky conditions, say for example, if the water visibility is around three feet or so, and you've got some brighter sky conditions, you'll definitely catch more on the green pumpkin, the more subdued color. But if you're fishing around more off-colored water, say water visibility of 12 inches, 15 inches, maybe cloudy, windy day, uh, the brighter shad patterns are gonna work a little bit better. <clears throat> I don't really, I don't think of it in terms of like, if the fish are feeding on shad or feeding on crawdads or feeding on perch, my own personal prefer or my own personal experience, I have found that there's more of a correlation to the light intensity and the water clarity on the color of your skirts there. Now the, the trailers are pretty similar to you guys. I have two simple type of trailers. My favorite trailer for the green pumpkin is a, is a Zoom Z Crawl Jr. Um, there's a lot of different color, a lot of different trailers that you can use. I've just caught a lot of fish on this Z Crawl Jr. here. Um, seems like it works really good for me. It's got some good tail action. It's nice and compact. Um, it's whatever you're comfortable with. But again, it's a green pumpkin or watermelon usually. Sometimes I'll put some orange or chartreuse on the tail to give it a little bit of color. And then um, on my shad patterns, my favorite is this uh, Zoom Z Swim, the paddle tail swim bait. Um, and I use it again in a variety of different shad colors, depending upon the, uh, the water visibility. Um, they, they make several different uh, hues as far as the zoom on the swim baits there. This particular one really stands out. So this would be a really good off colored water color right here. But those are my, my, my main two setups with it right there. Now, as far as that's the bait setup, now there's a couple other things we need to get to. You know, I'm just, I'm trying to touch on the highlights and the foundation here. The next thing is how you retrieve the bait and the rod that you want to use. One of the things with the chatterbait guys is you want to make sure that you use a rod that's got a fairly soft tip on it. Not like a whippy tip, but it needs to be fairly soft. My favorite is either the Mega Bass Launcher or the Mega Bass Jerkbait Special. It's got a nice medium tip on it. And this medium tip is really, really critical to hooking the fish because you wouldn't think it, but a chatterbait guy with guys with an open hook, you lose a lot of fish on this bait. There, I, if you don't have the right rod and the right hook set, you will lose them. I've lost a ton of fish on them until I figured out how to set the hook and use the right rod because I think what happens in this bait is they come up and they, a lot of times they will inhale the whole bait and you got a big fish like a four or five pounder and when you try to set the hook on that thing, a lot of times you don't even penetrate anything. You just, you know, pull on it and then they open their mouth and it comes out. But by having the right rod and the right hook set, you're gonna, you're gonna catch those fish. Now, the purpose of the soft tip on there is allow the fish to get the bait all the way in their mouth. You do want that. And by having that soft tip, that allows for just a little bit of flex, a little bit of hesitation, a little bit of stretch that gets that bait a little bit further back in that fish's mouth. And this is what you want to do. It's like when you cast out there and you're working that chatterbait, it's like most of the time the chatterbait strike is just weight. Occasionally they will slam it, but most of the time you're just reeling it and all of a sudden it gets heavy, almost like there's some grass on it and you don't really don't know. So when you throw it out there and you feel that bait get, and you feel it getting heavy or you think that you got a strike because sometimes you can detect it, fight the resistance to set the hook like that. You don't want to do that. You're going to lose the fish. When you, th when you know that you've got a fish on, just keep reeling, speed up your reeling and pull into that fish while you're reeling. Don't set the hook like that. Just start reeling real fast and bring the rod tip back and keep it coming like that. 
keep that fish coming to the boat until he decides to make another turn or go over a different direction. And then you have to let the fish have some line or whatever. But the main thing is you want to get that fish headed to you and you want to keep the pressure on because when they open their mouth, which they will eventually, if you keep that pressure on and you're reeling fast, when they open their mouth, that bait's gonna come out of their mouth and you're gonna hook them as it comes out there. That's, they're not gonna be able to blow it out. It's just gonna come out natural. So that's a big thing. Next thing as far as working the chatterbait. A lot of, a lot of how you work chatterbait depends on the mood and the personality of the fish, but here's a couple of my favorite ways. I usually throw it out there and unless I, if I'm fishing shallow water, I just begin my retrieve normally. And normally I've got my rod tip you know, sort of low to the water. I don't really keep it high up there. The only time I keep it high is if I'm, I'm trying to keep it super, super shallow or if I'm trying to wake it across the surface. Most of the time I've got my rod tip pointed like at maybe a seven o'clock or nine o'clock position. And I'm reeling, I'm, I'm sort of reeling it at a 45 degree angle. I want, I want the rod sort of like that as I reel it. So I can have, so I can take advantage of the flex of the tip of the rod. And then most of the time I reel it and I give it a half turn like that. I'll reel it four or five times and stop it, just hesitate it for a second. And that's a lot of times when they hit it. Now, the other way that I fish a chatterbait, if there's any grass around is I like to pump it. I'll throw it out there. I'll let it hit the bottom, even if it's like three or four foot deep and just simply pump it off the bottom. Let it go back down, pump it off the bottom. That is my favorite way to catch them in grass. And they'll slam it like that. A lot of times when you pump that thing up and it falls back down, those fish will just slam it and you'll just see your line tick like that. And it's usually a good one, but I've caught a lot more fish um, pumping it than I have reeling it straight across from there. Most of the time I'm using anywhere between say 15 and 20 pound tests, uh, Seaguar and Visex 4 carbon line. Probably my favorite pound test is 17. I use that most of the time. Um, I will use 20 pound test if I'm fishing shallower around some thicker cover, but I just, I like the way the bait fishes with 17. It's like you can fish it down a little bit, but it, it's still plenty strong to handle big ones and get them through, through thicker cover. But anyway, guys, that's just sort of a foundation for a little chatterbait refresher here coming up. Um, once that water temperature starts getting into the low to mid fifties, that's when you want to tie these on, which most of the time it's going to be, uh, probably March is going to be a really good month for it. And um, it's just a fun way to catch them, guys. Chatterbait fishing is so much fun if you've never done it. So hope it helps you guys out. We'll talk later. See you.